Uh, again, I'm Sean. I was working under Dave Phillips and Christine Suskus this, uh, this summer at UNAVCO, also under the advisement of Dr. Sarah Stamps at Virginia Tech. And we also got some input from uh, Scott Peckham and Maria Sosha from UC Boulder, or CU Boulder. <laughs> All right, so first, who am I? I forgot this last time in my practice talk, so I made a whole slide. <laughs> All right, so uh, in my past life, I was at Virginia Tech. Um, I was very spiked there, as you can see. And there's the cat I like to bother. All right, so what is a GNNS uh, or GPS velocity solution? So we use GPS to study Earth movement, as we all know here at UNESCO. Um, but we can use this for a huge variety of purposes. Specifically for me, what I'm looking at is for this type of velocity solution is kind of more large scale. Uh, I work under Dr. Sarah Stamp, and she can only think big. So <laughs> we're looking here at one of her plots from Africa. Um, so she has taken GPS units throughout the entirety of Africa um, and processed them to show the movement across the entirety of Africa, particularly focusing on the East African Rift system. That's where they see a very high concentration of them. Um, but they, you can use these to get millimeter precision out of surface movements on the Earth. So what are the motivations for my project? Um, particularly we're looking at, for these velocity solutions, there is no particular data standard for how they've been uh, published. So the actual how metadata is, the order of the data, what's even included. Um, there's also no sort of general facility for storing these types of data sets. So if you would like to go look at it, you have to go find the paper or track down the person. And since faculty move around fairly often, that can be difficult. Um, and then we'd also like to help researchers access these data sets uh, with this repository. Uh, here we have a use of myself in the field in Kenya this last winter. I'm installing actually one of these sites. All right, so what are the issues with the actual published data sets? Um, so there's a wide variety of formats, as I said, um, and that can be like a lot of times they'll just be included as a supplement in the paper, sometimes they'll be included on a private website, uh, sometimes they'll be stored here at UNAVCO, um, sometimes they'll be stored in some sort of like, like institutional database. Um, and what you actually get out of it is can be a complete crapshoot. Um, <laughs> So we're trying to fix that. Uh, here we have two uh, uh, tables. The first one is in an image format. That is actually a GIF format somebody managed to publish in, which is very hard to pull out, surprisingly enough. It's really just you have to look at it and type it up yourself. Um, and then here's a PDF, which can also be fairly difficult to pull things out of. Um, and those formats are not reusable. It would be ideal would be a text format, of course. Uh, so what we're looking at. Uh, so what I did this summer was I looked at 63 published uh, papers and data sets um, to see what metadata they include, how it's included, where, and what would be necessary for us to include in our own format. So from each of those, I made a very nice spreadsheet, which had exactly what we thought we needed and where it was in each of these uh, papers. Um, I only found 15 of them that had fully reusable data sets. So that meant that it, they included all of their metadata in a place that was bindable. Um, it was in some sort of text format that I could easily manipulate. Um, and they actually like kind of like properly cited their sources, which you'd be surprised people do not. Um, and then we also, working with uh, CU Boulder, uh, Maria Socha uh, is working on a Python script that will extract some additional data sets from PDF, which honestly could very well be the most exciting part of this project, but it's also not what I've been working on. Um, and it will soon be available on GitHub, probably as Chris makes it useful um, for the general use. So this is what we come up with. Here's our standard data format. Uh, we use GeoCSV guidelines um, because it's something that's both human readable and computer readable, which is very important for what we're trying to do here. Um, we've also used, we've included DOIs, we've included station names, um, we've included a actual citation in APA format, because that's what AGA, AGU uses. Um, and then we've included some sort of contact information or correspondence similar to how it's published in a paper, um, as well as all the information you need to process it into like a different reference frame, which is very important for GPS solutions. Um, and then we also named our, uh, named our columns based off the Geoscience Standard Names Convention ontology, uh, which is from EarthCube. So the second part of our project this summer was to create an actual place to hold this information so people could use it again. Um, 
I did not finish this part because we only had a short, really six usable weeks worth of actual work. Um, but this will be future work now. Uh, but we also, similar to what Coven did, was to use GeoPackage to try to incorporate uh, some tables and have them actually interact with each other in a way that you can go and say, hey, I want stuff from this area or I want to look at this station. Again, did not get that working, but hopefully at a later point we can get that working and then integrate that later into web services here at UNESCO. So why does this matter? Um, so this is really important to the geodet community um, because it will give you better access to the actual data sets. You can go and say, hey, I want these data sets and then you should be able to eventually download them from UNAVCO web services here. Um, it will also allow these RPIs here at UNAVCO to properly meet AGU fair standards, which data standards, which will be coming out as a statement here shortly, depending. Um, and it will also uh, go a long way toward actually making data sets reusable. So a huge part of science is to actually make it so your work is reproducible, and in GPS, that's pretty much non-existent currently. Um, but we'll try to make little steps. Um, here are a few uses in the figures here. Um, here is a project I was involved in in Hampton Roads, Virginia, with subsidence. Uh, in the East Coast, particularly, because it's fairly stable, there's not a lot of GPS stations. So we actually ended up having to combine, uh, I think it was four separate papers there, to create a high enough density that we could actually come up with any sort of usable information there. Um, and then here is another example going back to East Africa, where you see Dr. Sansa's focus with the red was mostly in the East Africa system, but once we add other papers, we can get a bigger picture of what's going on in the entirety of Africa, which is very useful for things like train rates or defining other possible microplates. Yep, so thank you. I would again thank, like to thank my supervisors, uh, Dave and Christine, as well as the NSF for funding everybody here. Um, yeah, thank you. It's been a great summer.